Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet Extra Surgeon Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled Planet X Causes Atmospheric Electron Depletion, which is life threatening. Now, Planet X system stellar cores are dead or severely energy depleted cores of what was once a living star, planet, or moon. The core is now surrounded by a debris field made of what was once the outer layers of the celestial object. The debris field is thus made of broken pieces of rock and water, the atmosphere having been lost at the time of death, as well as most of the electrons in the outer electron layer. This resulted in an energy depleted core which is still strongly positively charged. Thus, the stellar core and all the debris pieces are depleted in gravitational energy, but only the inner debris pieces are depleted in electrons. And here you see an illustration of what must have occurred. And this would be the living celestial object with a core, with an outer layer of material and an atmosphere, and it turns into a dead core, and the outer layers turn into this debris field. And here we have an illustration of a living celestial object and how it becomes a stellar core or a dead core, which is surrounded in an envelope, which is made out of water, and it's in the form of a cloud. So the objects were originally neutral, but lost most of their outer electrons. So this is what a normal living celestial object looks like. It has a positively charged core and a negatively charged outer layer. Also, it, the charge distribution is such that it's strongly positively charged at the center and it's less positively charged as we move towards the surface. And the same thing happens with, uh, with this layer. Um, it's more neutral towards the surface and it's more negatively charged towards the outer layer. So, the objects that turned into stellar cores were once like this, but when they died, they lost most of their outer layer, where most of the electrons were. So, some of the electrons would have gone in when the object died, lost all its gravitational energy. So, whatever electrons were still part of the object or were able to get back to the core would have neutralized the core and the outer layers. So the, the inner debris pieces will still be positively charged because most of the electrons wouldn't have got to them. And the outer pieces uh, may be uh, neutral because there were enough electrons to neutralize them. Now, um, so water makes up this uh, outer layer that they have, this envelope. And so these outer layers closest to the core remained positively charged and attracted the water. Water turned into a cloud when it too became depleted in gravitational energy and formed a polarized cloud layer around the stellar core. Polarized means that one side is more positive and the other side is more negative. And this occurs because water, the water molecule, is polarized. It has a positive and a negative side. The negative side is the oxygen side and the two hydrogen are more positively charged. So it's a polarized molecule which by aligning with other water molecules creates a layer which is also polarized. It's more negative on one side than on the other. And because the object and this represents a piece of the object, uh, is positively charged, the negative side of the water molecule would tend to attach to it, and so the outside would be more positively charged. So this cloud then is attached to the object, but because it's positively charged, it will attract electrons whenever it enters the negatively charged atmosphere of a living celestial object. And that way, it draws electrons towards the stellar core. And it is the gravitational interaction that causes electrons to be repelled to the outer edge of a living celestial object. 
It's the gravitational force that causes protons and electrons to repel, a, and the strength of the interaction depends on the gravitational energy. So electrons of more gravita with more gravitational energy will end up further out from the center than electrons with less. So you, you get a layers that are uh, less, um, have less gravitational energy in terms of electrons closer to the surface, and the electrons further up in the atmosphere have more gravitational energy. And it's the reverse with the core. The, the matter that ha is most positively charged, that is densest in protons will be at the center and somewhere in between the surface will be neutral and for and the electrostatic interactions of course in works in the opposite way so the electrostatic interaction will cause positive uh, positively charged particles to a to be attracted to negatively charged particles. So these two forces are always in opposition to each other. And for more details on that, you may look, of course, at book three entitled Planet X Review, Gravity and Light. And some of the article, um, you may look at article 181 and 182, may also explains this. Now, the debris pieces are different from the stellar cores because of the way charge is distributed across them. The spherical symmetric charge distribution with decreasing density as we move outwards makes the stellar cores into gravitational sources. So this is illustrated here. This is a debris piece. It will have this irregular shape. It's basically a broken piece of rock. And it will be positively charged, but it's the charge is uniformly distributed throughout the object. Whilst in a stellar core, the stellar core is more positively charged at the center, even though it's not as positively charged as it was when it was a living, uh, a living core, because some of the electrons came in and neutralized it, it's still strongly positively charged. So the, the, the debris pieces, I said, have a uniform charge distribution, but the stellar core has a spherical symmetric charge distribution. And in, in other words, the charge of the inner sphere is higher than the spherical shell around it. And this is what makes the stellar cores into a source of gravity. This also means that if the spherical uh, symmetric charge distribution can be artificially created, then we can construct a craft with an anti-gravity drive. Once in the atmosphere, the cloud attracts electrons from the Earth's atmosphere. If the cloud is around one of the debris pieces, the object will eventually become neutral. In other words, um, it will have an equal distribution of positive and negative charges throughout its volume, and the cloud will then separate from it. This explains why floating cities have become easier to see in the past few years. The cloud around the rock hovering in the Earth's atmosphere has started dissipating because the rock has become more neutral through absorbing electrons from the Earth's atmosphere. The pieces of rock float in the atmosphere because they have a lower gravitational potential than the Earth's surface. And for more details, you may look at Article 548 entitled Planet X and the Alien Floating Cities in the Sky. <clears throat> and this diagram illustrates what happens when stellar cores go back to becoming a neutral object. In other words, they become re-energized stellar cores. So they go from this, which means they are positively charged, they are de severely depleted, not only in gravitational energy, but electrons, to that. In other words, they ex absorb gravitational energy from the host body. If it's the Earth, then this material would come from the Earth, and then they end up uh, being able to create their own uh, negative outer layer from electrons that they absorb from the Earth's atmosphere as well. So they even more depleted in electrons than they are in gravitational energy. So there will always be uh, 
an increased drawing of electrons from the Earth's atmosphere by these objects. They will always draw more electrons than the material, the positively charged material which they draw and becomes their outer layer here from which they absorb energy. So they absorb gravitational energy from the electrons and from the, pro the positively charged material that they also draw from the Earth. And they continue to draw this material until they become in, they come into equilibrium. They become re-energized. They are able to maintain an outer negative layer. And once they do, they will never come into the Earth's atmosphere because now this negative outer layer will be repelled by the Earth's uh, outer negative layer. So they will not be able to come in anymore. Now, once so once stellar cores become re-energized and have their own uh, outer electron layer, they never come in again. But until then, they will come in over and over again. And they do so because they are ejected once the atmosphere around them becomes depleted in electrons. And this is illustrated in this diagram where you see a stellar core. And here it's a low gravitational potential stellar core, so like when it first comes to Earth. And what happens is it's uh, attracted to the electron layer. This is what's the, the force is attraction to outer electron layer. The outer electron layer is represented by this blue ring here. And so it's attracted to that layer. So it's the electrostatic inter interaction that brings it in. And this electron layer is at the appropriate energy level for the material on the surface of the stellar core. And then uh, there is another force, which is the gravitational uh, interaction force, which is repelling. This is the green arrow here. And this is the interaction between the positive matter in the stellar core, the protons, and this layer of protons in, inside the body of the Earth, which is at the same energy level as, again, the outer layer of the stellar core. And so this is, um, well, I say attraction there, but it's actually uh, a repelling force because the arrow points in that direction. This is uh, the attraction, but it's a very weak force. It's between electrons. It's whatever electrons the object has or part of the object will be attracted to this layer. But the object most likely has no electrons. Whatever electrons it had went combined with protons to and turn them into neutrons. So, but if there are any electrons, this is the force. The G stands for gravitational. Then once uh, the atmosphere becomes depleted in electrons at the appropriate energy level, then this uh, attractive force becomes a repelling force because now these electrons actually shielded the positive core from the stellar core, the, the Earth's positive core. In other words, it was not detected by the stellar core as long as there were electrons blocking it. But once there are no electrons, then the positive core actually, the, uh, the interaction is again with this um, layer of protons that are at the appropriate energy level. This interaction now becomes um, repulsive. So this is the force here. So now we have two repulsive forces, So and there is no attractive force, so the object <clears throat> is ejected. Now, with an object with increased gravitational potential, we have, again, the attractive force. And because now it has more gravitational energy, there will be an attractive force between the object and the proton layer inside the body of the Earth. That's the gravitational force. And whatever electrons it has gained will result in an attractive uh, gravitational force between electrons. But that's very weak because electrons have very low mass. 
and at this stage the object will be able to draw this material and if its material is magma from the earth then the object will only be able to draw it if it comes out of the earth through a volcano and in that case the object will absorb it and it will become a part of its outer layer but again the atmosphere is still absorbing electrons from the, from the atmosphere and eventually the atmosphere becomes depleted in electrons at that energy level so once again the electrostatic force becomes repulsive so the object is ejected again but now at a slower speed because there's an attractive force um, that uh, balances some of that uh, electrostatic force so the earth uh, will become uh, will replenish the electrons in time and the object will come back however the earth will become increasingly electron depleted the sun has become so depleted that its corona has completely disappeared and it has gone dark and you may look at article 535 entitled the sun is no longer shining what has happened to it if the Earth's atmosphere becomes completely depleted in certain energy levels of electrons, the objects without the surfaces at these energy levels will no longer be able to enter the atmosphere. However, as the objects pass by, they would still affect the internal charge distribution from some distance and will provoke the Earth into having earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Also, life on Earth is dependent on the electron lay in the atmosphere because without it there will be no rain from the planet X clouds coming into the atmosphere. As without electrons, they will not be able to absorb gravitational energy and eventually fall as rain. In addition, animal and human skin seems to react to the lack of electrons in the atmosphere by becoming drier. And drier skin is not as good a barrier to bacteria and viruses, which makes both animals and humans more susceptible to disease. So in conclusion, Planet X system stellar cores, when they come into the Earth's atmosphere, absorb gravitational energy and electrons. They deplete the atmosphere of electrons, which causes them to be ejected. But over time, the Earth becoming electro is becoming electron depleted, just as has occurred with the Sun, which has negative repercussions for life on Earth. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.